All right then, so let's start uh, today's webinar. Am I audible to everyone? Is my voice audible and I'm just sharing my screen? Let me know when it is visible as well. Both are good. Okay. So, welcome to Trade Masters webinar. And uh, as I've posted uh, in our premium channel recently, so we'll be discussing about a few topics uh, today. So the first one is going to be the current market scenario. So I want uh, this to be an interactive session. So uh, if you guys have any other ideas or uh, if you uh, feel you want to pitch in and say something, you can uh, just unmute your mic and you can speak. Okay. So the first one is going to be the current market scenario. And uh, the second topic, what we'll be discussing today will be the next T Nifty next viewpoint. So what is the direction that it is going to travel in the next uh, coming months? And the third is the best and safe investment for the next five years. So this is a uh, third point is going to be very, very important. And uh, it's going to increase your uh, you know, investment by almost eight to 10 times within the next five years. And this is the safest form of investment as well. So to so the first, first one, the current market scenario. So. Uh, does anyone uh, know who is a market leader? I mean, which country, which uh, country is a market leader? Uh, yes. Uh, U.S. probably. Yeah. So basically, uh, we have different market leaders, but the U.S. is uh, you know, the top most ranking among everything. So if uh, there is a crash in the U.S. market, our Indian markets is already obviously have some uh, you know reaction to the US market crash okay so uh, what is the current uh, scenario in US right now does anybody uh, know what is the, what the US market what the US government is facing right now the government is unstable uh, yeah the government is unstable for the past 20 years but they have been uh, you know manipulating it in such a way so that they look stable but right now the you know the things that uh, the things are coming out to light i would say it like that okay so the us government is currently facing a scenario called as a debt ceiling anybody uh, know uh, the meaning of the word ceiling no okay so ceiling is basically the roof okay so you are sitting in a room and we have a roof right so that is basically a ceiling it's a it's a common uh, word so debt, the word debt means if you are borrowing cash from somebody, then you are debt to that person, right? So the debt ceiling, uh, the word debt ceiling combined represents that the US market has already taken some loan, okay? And uh, the ceiling, which represents, we, we have a limit. Say, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you are uh, going, if you are going to plan to get a loan from the bank, Okay, so you have a ceiling. So, for example, uh, for example, uh, without any uh, uh, securities or without any collateral, if you are uh, trying to get a loan, you have a ceiling like you can uh, get a loan for only seven lakhs, and above that, you need to produce some collateral documents, right? So, we have a limit for how much we can get a loan for. So, that is called as your debt ceiling, and each and every single country has a debt ceiling limit. So, which means that a country can only borrow so much money from other people, from other investors or other country or the World Bank, etc. Okay. So, right now, the US market is having a ceiling of 28 trillion. Okay. So, the debt ceiling for the US market is 28 trillion. Okay. And this ceiling got touched last october uh, close to september or october okay so what is the meaning of uh, that what what do i refer by the ceiling is touched Deepen? so i think they will not be able to take any further loan and if loan is required they need to keep something you know as in in, in as a mortgage i would say yes so uh, but in the country wise you can't keep anything okay so the ceiling is already fixed determining all the revenues and everything the government is generating okay the ceiling is already fixed 
So right now the US government has already borrowed 20 trillion from trillion from other investors. Okay, so they can't borrow any more additional money from anybody. Okay, so uh, we had a bill passed in our uh, you know the uh, the US uh, government Congress uh, uh, saying that uh, during October of the end of September and the starting of October, Joe Biden passed a bill. Uh, in the parliament saying that uh, they want to increase uh, the debt ceiling and it it actually received a lot of uh, negative views from our uh, you know opposition party so we have uh, two different uh, you know uh, political parties in the us uh, congress so one is called as the republicans and the another one is called as uh, uh, Demo uh, democrats right so uh, does anyone know which uh, party joe biden uh, Paul Sandor. Okay, so the, that won't be uh, a necessary topic in this webinar. Okay, so the concept is Joe Biden passed a bill saying that uh, the US market has already reached its debt ceiling and uh, they want to increase the debt ceiling. To a little bit further so that they can borrow additional money right so uh let's consider the basic example uh you're borrowing some money from bank okay and for that money borrowed you have to pay some interest right so the current scenario is u.s government has borrowed 28 trillion and they don't have the revenue to even pay for that interest so the interest itself comes somewhere around close to uh, several billions okay and the UN, and the government doesn't have enough revenue to pay for the money that is borrowed okay so the joe biden ultimately passed a bill saying that they want to increase the debt ceiling so that they can uh, borrow additional money to pay for the interest so that, that is the basic uh, concept the government is the US government is running behind okay and uh, the opposition party uh, challenged it very severely they don't want to increase uh, you know the debt uh, ceiling limit if they keep on increasing the debt ceiling limit then uh, the government uh, is going to uh, continuously borrow money and it's going to collapse eventually and that particular collapse will be more uh, you know drastic so uh, but later they resolved it and uh, uh, the opposition party agreed uh, that they can increase your uh, debt ceiling but only to a certain limit so the limit that has been uh, you know revised is 480 billion us dollars okay so the previous limit was 28 trillion and the current limit is 28.48 trillion and this 480 billion will be uh, you know sufficient uh, only to pay interest for the next three months okay so uh, the bill was passed in october and it got approved in october and uh, we have October, November, and December. So December third is December third is the next due date. So uh, one once more, the Congress will uh, you know convene and uh, they will discuss uh, to increase the debt ceiling once again because the 480 billion will be spent only on the interest for the money that the U.S. government has borrowed. Okay, but the opposition party has already clearly told they won't increase the debt ceiling anymore so the government the ruling party has to determine some other way in order to you know counter this uh, situation so let's uh, you know analyze uh, the statistics right now the government has already borrowed so much money and uh, they can't borrow anymore so obviously uh, they can't pay the interest to anybody okay so they have borrowed money from somebody and they can't pay the interest so if you you are an investor in the US market, what will you do if they can't pay any money? You'll be withdrawing your funds, right? You'll be asking for, give me my uh, money back so that I can invest in some other, uh, you know, uh, sectors. So that is the current situation the government is facing. So when the investors started to, you know, start to pull back their money, what will happen to the US government? It will become unstable. The market will become unstable and there is going to be a huge crash. Okay, so that is what is given in the next one. So when there is a, a huge crash in the US government, the world economy is going to be destabilized. 
Okay. This is the underlying fact. This is going to happen very soon. So that is why we are having this webinar so that our members can understand what is going to happen the next uh, coming months. Okay. So we are uh, going to face some, uh, you know, huge uh, changes. Uh, it's still not uh, clear, but the direction in which the market is going, it is it has already given a confirmation that we are going to experience something drastic in the coming uh, few few weeks. Okay, so the U.S. market once the dip ceiling is uh, not lifted, it is going to face some serious uh, problems. And uh, when the U.S. market is facing some serious problems, we'll be having uh, an impact on the global market as well because the U.S. is a market leader. Okay, so now coming uh, to our situation, if the U.S. market is going to crash, what is going to happen? To the markets in india obviously everything is interlinked right so but indian market is not solely dependent on the us we also have some you know specific characteristics so that will save us from uh, the coming market crash to a certain scenario but still we will be having some fall in the market but it, it won't be to that extent uh, that what the us is going to face okay so this is the current market scenario in a global view now coming to nifty next view Okay, so uh, once again, when the debt ceiling is not increased in the US market, it is going to face a huge crash. But this crash will be reflected as a small correction in our, uh, not a small correction, a huge correction in our uh, Indian markets. Okay, so can anyone tell me uh, during this uh, uh, March uh, 2020 crash, Nifty came down to which level? Does anyone remember? 7,000. 7,000, right. So Nifty came all the way down to 7,000. From almost 12,500, Nifty crashed till 7,000. So that was almost like uh, uh, close to 45 to 45 percentage, right. So from 7,000, within the next one year, Nifty you know, went all the way up to, within the next one and a half years, Nifty went all the way up to 18,000. 18,200 to be precise, right. So this up move is almost uh, we have almost 11000 points up move that that's approximately uh, close to 150 percentage up move right so when the bull run is too long we uh, are expecting a small correction in the market that that is how a healthy market uh, reacts okay so this is uh, what is going to be the nifty in the next scenario so i'll just uh, give you a small view on nifty This is our Nifty chart, and if uh, you know, some of our premium clients is uh, present here, you would have uh, already realized. I have already posted uh, this in our uh, premium group, saying that, and also in our public group, saying that Nifty is going to come down. The direction for Nifty is on the downside for the next few weeks. Right. So if you have uh, taken a put position uh, close to uh, when I uh, told this would happen, you would have had almost like 800 points profit. So 800, that's, that's approximately uh, the one lot for Nifty is 50. So that, that's a huge returns within a short uh, two week span, right? So Nifty has already fallen by 800 points. Okay, and still we don't have any news for uh, uh, December 3 is still two weeks away. So when that news comes and if the news is negative, then Nifty has a huge possibility to come all the way down to 16,400 and uh, even 15,900. So this is going to be Nifty's, you know, uh, worst case scenario target. So 15,900 is going to be Nifty's target on the downside. And we also have a clear cut pattern. See, this trend line is already broken and we have a good head and shoulder pattern that is formed as well. And the pattern bro got broken today. And uh, today itself, we witnessed almost 450 points, uh, you know, fall in Nifty. So from, uh, 800 Nifty opened at 17,800 today and it went all the way down to 17,300. So that's approximately 500 points for in a single day, right? So the pattern is already formed even before, uh, you know, the news uh, uh, becomes a fact. You will have a lot of, uh, when you know technical analysis is very good, then the pattern will, will already be formed even before the news is released. 
right? So this is uh, the pattern that is uh, formed in the current uh, Nifty market. So Nifty has already formed a head and shoulder pattern and the head and shoulder uh, base is already broken. So the next uh, target is for Nifty is going to be 17,000, 16,400. And the worst case scenario target is going to be 17, 000, sorry, 15,900. So from here, we can expect Nifty to go up. Okay, so when we uh, you know, put it in, uh, terms of uh, correction so this is this is not a crash this is only a correction the crash is uh, yet to come okay so when we put it in terms of uh, correction so we'll be having the reversal will happen somewhere in between 16400 to 15900 so when the market uh, touches 16400 you can start accumulating your stocks on the long run and uh, the first 50 percentage you can start accumulating 50 percentage of your stocks at 16,400 and the remaining uh, 50 percentage of the stocks you can start buying if the market comes down to 15,900 and you can just hold it for the long run okay so the next uh, view for nifty is it's going to give a correction to 15,900 and from there it's going to be a bull run once again and we can uh, see nifty touching 22,000 23,000 within the next two years from there it's still going to go up okay so this is the next uh, view for Nifty. Does anybody have any questions in this? Promote Suresh Vipin. Yeah, so uh, no. you mean to say, <clears throat> yeah, so I have a question. So you mean to say that oh, yeah, it, in yeah, a worst just, case scenario. Just, just a second. So I'm not getting who is speaking. So we can just- uh, This is Pramod. This is Pramod, yeah. yeah. Hi Pramod, yeah. So the thing is, uh, you, you mean to say that in a worst case scenario, it will go to fifth. I mean, it can go till fifteen thousand nine hundred, yes. or it can go beyond down as well. How it is, or is the, the threshold case, limit? I mean, the worst case scenario is going to be fifteen thousand nine. Okay. Otherwise, sixteen thousand four hundred should be the first target. Yes. And if it falls, you know, even more than that, then the final target would be fifteen thousand nine hundred, right? Yes. Yes. Okay okay so now uh, the market is already broken it can rise up uh, till 17,800 and after that it's going to come down so that is the prediction for nifty for the coming few weeks okay so now let's uh, get back to our presentation so when this happens uh, and uh, let's say uh, the market is uh, collapsing and you don't want to risk in any stocks okay so the best investment plan for the next five years is going to be in gold and silver these are the precious metals that are you know running the economy and the the, the safest plan would be to go to buy gold and silver okay so i'll we have a short uh, story behind this so we'll be uh, i'll just uh, give you a small example Okay, so uh, if you're having uh, some some hundred rupees uh, Indian currency, so that is just a piece of paper. How does it derive the value hundred rupees? Does anybody have any clue? No one. Okay, see if you're having the 100 rupees Indian currency, it means you're, uh, you're having 100 rupees worth of gold. Okay, so the paper that you're holding is just a useless paper unless it is backed up by gold. Right, so this is the concept behind the currency, right? Each and every single currency, even if it's a 1 rupee, it's backed up by 1, one rupee worth of gold. Okay, so the current uh, scenario, uh, I need to, uh, you know, revise on the history for this so uh, let's get back to the ancient times so when uh, during the medieval and even before uh, the, those period how did the transaction take place does anyone have any idea barter system okay can you uh, give a give it a little bit more explanation what, what does the barter system mean uh, barter system is something like you are growing rice and i'm going growing coffee so mm -hmm. I say you give me a little coffee, I'll give in return, I'll give you, yeah, you give me rice, I'll give you coffee in return. Exactly. So it's 
it's basically uh, you know the exchanging of products that's called as your barter system right so what happens yeah. if uh, for example uh, uh, you are mining uh, you know uh, cotton okay and i am giving you for example let's say coal or wheat so the so the prices are not exactly matched right so when that happens uh, you can say if cotton is uh, you know uh, giving a higher worth during that time bipin will be giving me 1 kg of cotton and i'll be giving him 2 uh, uh, kg of wheat so it will it uh, it was working in that uh, ratio okay so now let's see evolve a little bit uh, you know further from that so now what happens i am approaching bipin saying that give me 1 kg of cotton and i will pay you in gold okay so i'll be buying uh, 1 kg of cotton from bipin and i'll i'll pay him the money in gold so that is how the gold transaction started okay so uh, now uh, when you are uh, having a huge amount of gold gold is uh, considered as a precious metal even back then so it was uh, the most you uh, know suitable uh, means for transaction when you are having huge amounts of gold a lot of theft will be coming into place right so that is when a banking system came into place so for example bipin is having 100 tons of gold and he is after it is going to you know be uh, uh, some things will enter into his arm and uh, he is going to face a theft so when that happens uh, bipin will approach a banker let's say i am the banker i am uh, i am taking 100 uh, tons of gold from bipin and i am keeping it safe i am hiring some bodyguards and i am keeping it safe for that uh, safety i am uh, charging a little bit so for example if uh, for one year of safety i am charging uh, you know 0.5 ounces or something of gold so that is going the tra- the banking system came into existence like that okay so now uh, now we have evolved into the gold transaction period so for uh, the transactions everything is going to be happening in gold okay so instead of 1 kg of cotton let's say i am buying 100 tons of cotton so i need to give the equivalent amount of gold right so i cannot carry uh, so much gold with me and i cannot do the transaction physically so then what happened uh, we have give, we have kept our all our gold reserves in some bank right the bank started issuing some agreement bonds saying bipin has uh, you know deposited some uh, 100 tons of gold with me and this is the agreement so bipin can use this agreement to buy 100 tons of cotton and he can give the agreement to the opposite party that opposite party can take that agreement to the bank and he can collect the gold uh, points okay so till till this is clear yes okay so uh, the transaction period now is moving into agreements so the bank will be holding your gold and for that they will be giving you a bond an agreement and you can make your transaction or you can buy some goods using that bond the opposition party will be buying the bond and they can collect the gold from your bank so it started uh, working like that okay so then uh, that uh, bonds became currencies with the evolution of countries okay so the bonds became currencies and uh, does anyone know the history behind the why uh, you, uh, we use uh, us dollar as a reserve currency no okay uh, i see only bipin answering what about pramod suresh is this confusing or uh... okay so uh, when uh, the us during the first world war Uh, the us market uh, had a lot of uh, you know cotton production cotton was considered to be a uh, white gold during the time period okay so us was uh, you know making a lot of cottons and was exporting uh, cottons to the other uh, countries as well and uh, the cotton that was uh, you know exported uh, got uh, the returns came back in gold so the gold reserve in us uh, you know country became so huge okay and it, it was developing into a superpower so we after the world war we had an agreement uh, called as a bretton woods okay so during this agreement 
all the other uh, nations all the other countries uh, signed uh, signed an agreement stating that instead of uh, you know uh, making the transaction using gold we'll keep us uh, uh, we'll keep us currency as a gold reserve okay so the transaction was not uh, you know uh, being conducted in gold right now it was conducted through us currency that was a backup okay and uh, uh, the agreement uh, stated that for every 35 dollars okay you can buy one ounce of gold so one ounce of gold means it's uh, 28 grams in uh, indian terms okay so that is the agreement that was uh, signed so this is during uh, world war 1 now world war 1 uh, is over and world war 2 is also over and uh, after 10 years uh, after the world war 2 say somewhere around 19 uh, early 1970s uh, the first country that uh, started this was france okay so france uh, what did france do is it opposed to us and it said i am returning all the us currency that i have okay so the reserve currency is now U, uh, us dollars so france is saying i am returning all the us dollars now give me the equivalent amount of gold okay so france is taking back the gold it has uh, uh, you know given the us for its uh, us dollars so when it's uh, when france started doing this all the other countries also started following the same they started uh, giving uh, the us dollars back to us and they started asking for gold now because of this the gold reserve in us started decreasing okay and uh, the company sorry the country was facing uh, economical uh, crisis if uh, this uh, continued to happen so during that uh, it was happening during the early 1970s and the president during that time was uh, nixon okay so what uh, president nixon did is he passed a uh, you know bill or uh, a statement saying that the us dollars right now is uh, linked with gold so they want to break they are breaking the link between the us dollar and gold okay so if a country is approaching uh, the us dollars and so the us uh, uh, country and if they are, if they are uh, giving uh, if they are returning back uh, uh, the us dollars us cannot does not have the obligation to return the same amount in gold so the 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 link is severed okay and uh, it was said that it was only a temporary it was only on a temporary basis and this happened in 1970 and today we are living in 2021 still now the link is not attached okay so right now when the link is severed gold is not linked with us uh, currency okay so when this happened a new uh, form of currency came into play it's called as a fiat currency okay so fiat currency means uh, till now whatever currency you are having it is going to be directly linked with gold okay if you are having 100 uh, dollars it means you are having uh, 100 dollars worth of gold in the bank okay so right now when uh, fiat currency means that particular uh, paper the currency dot what you are holding is not backed up by gold so the government what they did they started printing a lot of uh, you know uh, us currencies and uh, those currencies were not backed up by gold at all so when this happened uh, a lot of us currencies uh, came into the market and uh, it started boosting the us economy but at the same time they did not have any gold reserve to you know uh, evaluate so the ratio should be 1 to 1 if you have 1 kg of gold you should uh, have 1 uh, kg worth of us dollars that should be the ratio now when the fiat currency comes into play the ratio is completely broken okay a lot of uh, you know fiat currencies came into play that means uh, a lot the, the government started printing a lot of money okay so right now what is happening is uh, trillions of uh, dollars are in the market but us does not have enough gold reserve to show the backup for all those uh, currency they have printed and this is the reason why russia and china is asking uh, us to show their gold reserve did anyone uh, come across this deepen deepen no uh, recently oh. i heard that china is doing something re- related to this but uh, i was not sure that it was this thing yes so this is this is the reason why uh, uh, both the uh, both the countries are asking us to show their gold reserve 
they are they are circulating so much uh, cash in the open market but do they have the gold reserve means it's a definite hard no okay so when uh, when the world realizes this it's going to be a huge crash okay so th this is when the major crash is going to happen okay so this this is also going to happen in the next uh, coming few years it's going to be in a short time frame okay so now uh, let's uh, get back to the investment why i am asking you guys to invest uh, in gold and silver for the next five years okay so when uh, the us market itself is collapsing okay when the when the dollar value itself is not is not uh, you know uh, going to stand so what is the next uh, uh, investment that you can do till now the reserve currency is dollar so that is why everybody has been investing in the reserve currency and in the us market when the reserve currency is uh, you know uh, taken out of the equation and the us market is going to face a huge crash like anything what is the next higher thing from us currency gold right so the currency is backed by gold so instead of investing in the us uh, they the investors are going to go for the ancient method that is investing in gold so right now the gold uh, one gram of gold is costing somewhere around 4500 to 4600 the prediction is if this continues by 2026 one gram of gold coin is going to reach 30 to 40000 even 45000 maximum so this this might seem silly during this point but when 2025 comes and the gold is uh, reaching 35,000 and 40,000, I don't want you guys to, uh, you know, uh, miss out on the opportunity. And if this is the best case scenario that could happen, and the worst case scenario, if this doesn't happen, then you have gold as an asset. Gold on the long run is always, uh, you know, a bull market. Gold will always be on the bull run, no matter what. So gold will always go up. And the, the prediction as of now is by 2026, gold will be touching 35,000, 40,000. So I request everyone that who have joined this webinar, take this seriously. And instead of uh, you know going for gold bonds, start buying physical gold coin, or you can buy gold uh, ornaments or chains something. Okay, so, but you should be in a physical format. So that is the best way of investment in gold right now. So uh, that uh, concludes the webinar for today. Does anybody have any questions? So, Melvin, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Rupin. So, what do you think would... Rupin, your voice is breaking up. Have a this, market, this Indian market? Yeah, you're, you're audible now. Can you repeat your question? By December 3rd, there would be a shake in the market. Will there be any panic selling in Indian market? And what do you think? Should we hold the stocks which are in profit or should we book profits? No, see, uh, the time when I uh, posted uh, the time when I posted uh, this uh, this market is going to give a correction in our group, I sold off all my uh, positions. Okay, so right now, uh, it's not a good time to go long on the market. It's very good to go uh, on the selling side. Thank you. Okay, it's it's not a good time to invest in the market right now. So, uh, like I say, I see uh, during a bull run you can make profits, but during uh, the crash or the beer market you can make a fortune. So this is the time to make a fortune. When the market is touching fifteen thousand nine hundred, you can uh, obviously go for the bull run once again. Okay, so till then, if you are not interested in selling uh, some of, if you are not interested in shorting the stocks. You can just sit quietly with your capital, and when uh, you know the market gives a good correction, you can go long once again. Thanks again. Yep. So, does anybody else have any question, Suresh, Vishnu? Deepan? Yes, sir. Normally. Okay. So uh, that concludes uh, uh, the webinar for today. I hope this information was useful. Try to accumulate gold as much as possible within the next five years. It's going to skyrocket like anything. 
and uh, the current market scenario is don't be on the long side be on the short side uh, positionally and we will be facing some good correction in the indian market so once uh, uh, 16400 or 15900 is touched we we will we have uh, one more opportunity to go long on the market okay so i hope this uh, webinar was useful thank you once again for joining i'll see you guys in the next webinar take care good night good night Thank you, Neil. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.